my bedroom and this room probably had the most amount of activity in it as far as construction goes. There was a giant hole that was put in between my two windows and both windows were removed. We actually had to put a fire escape because I never had a fire escape in my building living here for 14 years. So um, it's exciting because with the fire escape, I could actually put some plants on it, which is not so bad. But um, this room actually went through uh, such a tumultuous time. But I'm happy to say that we got it back in order, which is really marvelous. Um, you'll see that this is my green wall. I've actually replaced a, a few plants in here as well. I really love using my green wall as a testing zone. And some of the new ones that I have are alocasia, which I have lots of alocasia here. This is a beautiful fry deck. And then here I have another alocasia. And then this is another cultivar of alocasia right here that can't remember what it's called. It's like black shield. I do have a reginula up here, if I could pull down, which I think is absolutely really beautiful. And they seem to do surprisingly well in this um, zone right here, along with aglionemas and some maiden hair. I love maiden hair up here. Um, some of the smaller leaved varieties could get pretty brown because they get, uh, you know, blocked out from the sunlight, but some of these larger leaved varieties um, are quite good and I, it's important for me to keep them up away from my chicken because she loves maiden hair fern. So even though I had them growing in my closet like on the bottom, um, she would just go over and mow them over. And uh, which is fine because if you have to actually clip them back, they do eventually emerge. They have a really good root zone I found. But um, in the green wall, they really do thrive. Dracaenas do extremely well, and the new ones that I've put in are Pelionias right here. So you could see these, and I have another variety back up over here, if you could see, it's a lighter color. You see that? And these are underrated houseplants. I have to say, when you're looking at them in the garden center, they don't look like much, but I love them, and they are super easy to propagate. If you actually come over here, we'll make a beeline. This I could spend a whole episode on and I've already put an episode into growing my plants in my biopod, but you'll see that I also had pelionias here, which is why I brought you over here. This is actually looking a little wilty because it has no roots yet, but I'm just trying to root it in some sphagnum. If you could see, I actually cut it right here from this one right here. Um, I'll even pull this out. If you excuse me, I'll open up this door. And this is where I actually cut it. And it was growing up. You'll see a lot of these plants are growing right up. Some of them are getting a little chlorotic because they're hitting the light and they're reducing the chlorophyll within their leaves quite heavily. So I have to actually cut this back. So much stuff grows here. You'll see like the, there's an amorphophallus. See, I have maybe some thrips here, so I'll be putting a, a green lacewing in. This is a beautiful type of philodendron, Diffenbachia, Calathea, Pelionia, some orchids. Um, this is in the Gesneriad family. You'll see this amazing jewel orchid right here, which has these kind of like lightning bolt, thunderbolt kind of leaves. Um, maidenhair wire vine. My Hoffmania is even back here. <laughs> There's so many things that have been buried back here with all these plants. I mean, Columnia, I mean, I can't even tell you. I have to come in here and, and weed. Um, Hoparsia, Squarosums in here. Oh, the type of Lycopoda. Oh my gosh, if we go back here even, all this like silver stuff back here, it's a type of um, Peperomia, and this is a Philodendron brantianum. This is Margarvias back here, which are kind of growing. There's a Raphidophora even. Uh, there's just so much depth and layer to this vivarium. I, I can't even begin to tell you how much I love this. I have made room for a second one in my house. And I probably have 80 plus species in here. I just kind of went whole hog in because things grow so well. Now I know how people feel who like are in the tropics or in Miami because this is just a wonderful little play area. So I'll give you a link to this as well. Um, the aquatic plants, really fun to play with. I'll give you a link and a discount code also to some of the 
aquatic plants that I'm growing down here as well. Um, that's kind of totally expanded the breadth of what it means to growing um, house plants indoors. So this is my closet garden and um, you'll notice that I have uh, humidity mats underneath here and I also have a humidifier so this area gets really humid. I don't usually have my humidifier on in the summer months because it is quite humid here. It's now getting into the fall months so I probably will have my humidifier on a little bit more. But this has been a really wonderful area. You'll see I have grow lights but also get some southwest facing windows and Things have just been growing extremely well. You could see this philodendron. I could even clip this right here or right here and actually take a cutting of this if I want. New anthurium that I recently just um, acquired. Uh, you'll see my pilea peperimioides right here, which has been growing extremely well. I just kind of shifted it around because you see that it was growing towards the light and I just shifted it around so that it grows a little bit more even on this side as well. Calathea orbifolia right here you'll see and another Calathea which is just exquisite. I mean it really looks like it has pink paint marks on it. Really bizarro but really beautiful and, and likes that extra humidity and in some cases the plants here that are on the humidity mats they like that you know constant water source. Also you'll see this new plant that I got that's quite exquisite. It's not really known as a house plant, but I really love the, the, the palmate shaped leaves. And this is called a chaya. The guy who sold it to me told me it was a jatropha, which I could see that, you know, it, it might look like a jatropha to some folks, but it's, um, it's considered a chaya. It's poisonous um, from the standpoint if you eat it raw, but if you actually cook it, becomes a totally edible plant. So probably whatever is in the inside as it gets cooked out uh, re gets rid of the toxins. So it actually is an important plant I think in diets within Mexico. So um, love growing it, needs a lot of light. So you have to give it a, a good su southern exposure but it's been growing beautifully since I've gotten it. So as I mentioned, um, this area is kind of flooded in southwest facing light. So what that means is I grow a lot of cacti and succulents in the window, which I'll take you through. But in the center between the two windows, you get some obtuse light that comes in, but not necessarily direct light. So what I'm actually growing in the center between the windows is the most exciting. I actually recently just got a nice monstera pole and I have a Pachira aquatica that I'm growing, but in the middle is my Raphidophora tetrasperma. And I just want to show you how much it's actually grown since I've gotten it. So one of the plants that I was most worried about during the whole construction situation was my Raphidophora tetrasperma. And this one got broken in three places by one of the construction workers and I was just absolutely mortified. But as you could see from here, it's growing beautifully. Now when I got this, you'll see it was up to here on the totem. Uh, so that is basically where the plant ended and now you could see that it has just clambered up this trellis and is quite tall. It's growing up above the window space right now. And you can see that the internodes are not quite long, um, that it's getting pretty good sunlight so the leaves look really nice and healthy and really tight. Uh, so I'm going to keep it here for as long as I possibly can. I might have to take some cuttings off of it because I don't think that this is going to be a plant that really loves growing on the ceiling like my um, epiprenums do. Um, but otherwise I think that it's, it's growing exceptionally well. I also just recently got this Monstera right here, which I also picked up from Chelsea Garden Center, albeit more recently. And I think given the way that the Raphidophora is growing, that this Monstera will grow extremely well in this area as well. And then to the left of the Raphidophora, I have Apachira aquatica, very similar to the one that I have in my kitchen, except this one's not variegated. And you can find these. These are really easy houseplants to grow. You could find them in garden centers. You could find them at your bodegas and your local, you know, plant shops. They're very super easy um, to, to grow. Something, something similar with a palmate leaf, and I really do love those kind of like palmate, like hand-like leaves, is this manahot, and it's a variegated manahot grown extremely well. Um, it came to me pretty stemmy on the bottom. It tends to lose its leaves on the bottom and put them up towards the top, especially now that I have this in the window. 
So it has no point to like have leaves on the bottom of the stem where there's no window light. I have other plants that have that kind of palmate leaves that are variegated. This is one that I have to plant outdoors. This is a variegated Parthenocissus kinkafolia, which I tried growing indoors, but it's very hard. It really needs a, uh, the cold season, but you can see that the leaves are just starting to get this very beautiful variegated variegation. Not usually seen as a variegated plant, although it is native here in the Northeast. So I'm probably gonna plant this one, um, you know, on my, uh, in my community garden, or alternatively, I'll have one out on my uh, awesome fire escape now that I have it. Oh, one of the things I had did mention before was I mentioned the begonia venosa outside, out there. This is a begonia venosa, and you can see that it's actually flowering, so it has the little begonia flowers. You can really tell a plant on what genus it belongs to, usually by how it flowers, but you could see that this one has grown exceptionally well. It's a very succulent variety of begonia, and I got this from a cutting. One of my favorite begonias right here. And then you could actually um, see all the different types of succulents and cacti that I have in the windows. Again, this is a southwest exposure, so it gets a lot of light and a little bit more towards the back, which is this is on top of a heater. So I'll have to be very careful about this in the winter months as it starts to heat up because you could kill the plants very easily that way. And then I'd like to point out my Dracaena here because this is my Dracaena that was growing very leggy and it was pretty sad in my living room eventually. And I didn't think it was going to be sad because I already had a Dracaena in there that was doing very well, but this thin lead variety was not growing as well. But it serves two purposes because this Hoya that I have growing amazingly well needed something to grow up on. So you could see that I'm, I'm starting to train it up on the Dracaena since the Dracaena is so tall. And if you make your way all the way up, you'll see this amazing Monstera that I have, Monstera deliciosa up there. And it is, I'm gonna to need to find a new place for it. This is from Plants, P-L-A-N-T-Z. And they are actually based in Florida and they send large plants. So if you have um, a need for a large plant, you don't have a, uh, you're looking for a Dracaena or a Ficus or a Monstera for your place or maybe for your studio or, for your office space, they actually send plants um, very well, I have to admit. And so I'll leave the, the link down for them as well. But this one is huge. <laughs> I have to find a, probably a better place to actually put it. But for right now, it's on top of my armoire. So I have a few more things that I'd like to point out in this room before moving on. And this is my Ficus elasti elastica variegata. And this has been growing since a little tiny baby that I had it and it's a little bit of a slower grower than like say my ficus lyrata but it's been a very um, uh, reliable grower and I've had it in my southern window I've had it pulled away from my southern window and seems to kind of be a little bit more amenable to different types of light and then I'll pull out this one which is really lovely this is Scandapsis trubii dark form it's a little dusty I see because it has really beautiful leaves but I need to definitely dust it this I heard well grows um, very well on a totem I don't have it on a totem um, but I picked this one up at Sprout Home Chicago while I was traveling out to Chicago and didn't have an ID on it but my friend Mick Mittemeyer actually ID'd it for me and it is um, a very special plant I actually really love it and then some of the cool things actually that I forgot to mention on my green wall, if we look over here, I bought these, uh, these hand wrought iron. These are for my kitchen, but my kitchen wall wouldn't hold them because they're quite heavy. So I just recently installed them with my father on my green wall. And the other thing that I'd like to point out is the different types of variations and cultivars that I have of Sansevieria, which is the snake plant. So, if you look really closely and we pan along the edges, you'll see so many different variations. And actually, if you even look closely, you'll see all these little new growths happening of all the, uh, all the snake plants. 
So I went through so many different iterations here with so many different plants in the base of my green wall, but I didn't want them spilling over and I needed something that would grow up vertically. So of course the snake plant was the perfect solution.